um, Hollinger's process. <laughs> That is music to my ears. And of course, one of the biggest causes of that, this, a turbo. The sound of those blades is heavenly. The sound of a four rotor is also heavenly. But my third most favorite sound in that video is the idea of a sequential transmission. If you notice, Carl, the guy in the video, is actually the previous owner of my four rotor. And the thing that Carl is doing that makes me super jealous in the video is he is slamming gears. You just see him pulling on that. There's two levers. One's a e-brake, but the other one is the transmission. And I am excited to say that that is the exact same transmission that we have for this project. I have not shown this off in detail at all because I didn't want to do it until this phase, until we were actually building the damn car. And here it is. Can I get a drum roll before you do that? Oh, wait, hang on, hang on. On the window? Yeah, Come on, Rob. <laughs> All right, show the damn chance. <laughs> we failed this drum roll. This is the Hollinger RD6. It's very fitting considering uh, those are my initials. Six stands for something on me too. This is a sequential transmission and there is so much packed inside of this small container. I spent a whole day with Dana from Hollinger USA describing the internals of this. Unfortunately, the audio was filmed separately back when we didn't have our cool vlogging cameras. I don't have the audio files and Dana is a soft-spoken man. The audio didn't turn out as well as we wanted to. I think he's wondering when was this video ever going to be released because we filmed that two years ago. Some of the things that he told me about this transmission, some of you know sequential transmission means there's no H pattern. There's no first, second, third, fourth, or even on the Diablo, first, second, third, fourth. It's down, 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 up, 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 and you go from reverse, neutral, kind of like a, a motorcycle, same kind of concept, you, you're just directions. You do not use a clutch for most of those shifts. From going into first, you use the clutch, you know, that's that. But this has dog rings, and dog rings are this simple. Instead of synchros that try and get things synchronized in speed, dog rings are fingers like this. Super simple concept that slam in, and even if they're not exactly ready, they just slam in and then catch, and then boom, you are in gear. Super fast shifts, some of the fastest shifting possible. I think maybe some dual clutches nowadays are rivaling it. Talk about manual transmissions, it's just boom, it's on. and Violent, it's good. Still smooth in a general sense, but violent overall. This transmission is surprisingly light. I'm actually gonna measure it. I'm gonna go read your standard measurement process. This thing has come in so handy. I saw one comment on the channel that was like, Rob Dom, the weighing channel. <laughs> so uh, I am, uh, Jared, go ahead and uh, blur that out. 191. 191.4. <laughs> I hate you so much. Oh, I am 280. Oh my god, exactly Shut up. 280. Shut up. No way. What? <laughs> what the fuck? You are you are clairvoyant, Jarrett. That's really weird. That is really weird. That was that was first and only take. Oh my god, dude. What? Okay, so that oh maybe it's these guns, but that felt uh, lighter than that. If I'm 190 and that's 280, that's 90 pounds. Still way lighter than the T56 Magnum and way less awkward, it's very small and compact. That is a transmission capable of handling a shit ton of torque. I picked this for a couple reasons. And one of them was that the transmission for the Hunicorn was not capable of reaching both the wheel speed and the torque that I was gonna need on this car. The RD6 is capable of both. I have a custom gear set in here, but just like most transmissions, fourth gear or fifth gear, I think on this one, fourth or fifth, is one to one, meaning that each gear is the same size. So what goes into the transmission comes out of the transmission at the same speed. One of the most interesting things that I have done on this transmission is the billet piece up here. If you take this off, this is where you would pull, like Carl did on that video, he's pulling a lever that shifts the transmission. Instead, I have this actuator arm right here, but this, a pneumatic actuator both up and down, you feed it air from an air tank, air pump, air tank setup, and then you trigger the actuators up or down, and it's sitting right there, pulls the transmission up or down. You can have A, the ECU shift a manual transmission, or B, you can have paddle shifting, and it's still a manual. I'm not talking like the Toyota Corollas where they got sport mode, you shift it, the manual or automatic transmission to sport mode, and you press the little tab buttons on the steering wheel. That is the farthest thing from sport mode. I'll even give 
Toyota a little bit of razzing about that. It shifts super fast, the ZF whatever, eight or whatever that is. This is actual manual transmission being shifted pneumatically. That, that just, that's like cream of the crop to me. I can have paddle shifting. I still want to have the big shifter. The ECU can control the shifting. If I'm just focused on going really fast, the ECU can get right up to the correct RPM and shift it for me. So thank God for the Adaptronic being capable of doing all of that. So that is probably the pinnacle of what this transmission will do as it is in this car. So a quick side note, this is the stock FD manual rear flywheel. There's not a front flywheel, but it's, it's, there's multiple purposes for this thing. This weighs 191 plus 211. So this weighs 20 pounds. My goal, my goal here is to make this engine sound like a 787B. I'm talking like that, woo, woo, that high, quick rev it. Here is one of my many solutions to doing that. This is a billet, I love the word billet, aluminum flywheel. Let's see how light this is. So 20 pounds is on the other one. So this one is 11 pounds less than the stock FD flywheel. Those of you guys with sharp eyes are gonna notice something that I'm not including though. This one includes a chunk of metal right there. What that chunk of metal is, is this right here. It's a counterweight. I'm gonna be apples to apples comparison guy. Here's the counterweight to my other four rotor. Let's measure how much this weighs. Should weigh, it should weigh four pounds. So when you add the combination of these two together against this, we shave more than four pounds off of the rotating mass on the back of this engine. Massive numbers that make a big difference. It will increase difficulty and drivability. You know, the engine's gonna You know, you can choke the engine out easier because there's less mass, there's less uh, momentum, I guess. That might be the correct word, might not. But you know what I mean, is that when there, it's spinning, it's gonna stay spinning. Less mass means that putting the clutch in gear, ugh, I could potentially choke it out. But there you go, there is even more of all that billet goodness on the drivetrain coming to you all at once. This is nice. This is a front input shaft to Mazda converter. I may have not done that correctly though, because now we're using Mazda input shafts and with a pilot bearing, uh, with a pilot bearing, it goes something like that. And then you put your clutch in here. This is gonna take some tool retooling. Uh, my dream would go to get four plates into this spot. I don't think that's gonna happen but we can always get this machined again to solve our challenge. Now, if you thought that that was the end of how cool this transmission is, you are thankfully wrong. This backside is designed to work for GTRs. So I kind of took Carl's idea of having a rear wheel drive Hollinger RD6. It was Dana of all people who solved my all wheel drive dilemma. I'd reached out to him about getting the transmission to begin with, and then when I found out the Hunicorn stuff wouldn't work, he was the one that said, well, you could buy this back end of this transmission, which is meant for a R32 GTR. So this goes to what you've seen now as the, the transfer case. That's not what the coolest part of this to me, is this right here. This is a gear sensor. That's it, it senses what gear you're in. And so you see on like, any video of a sick car where it's like four, five, right, that's not, that's backwards, four, three, two, what tells you exactly what gear you were in. So the transmission and this traction control system and all of those systems can know, here's what gear I'm in, here's the engine RPM, the clutch, is it pressed in or not? And we can tell what the wheel speed should be and if we're having traction or losing it. All of that, the whole drivetrain is just figured out. There's no reverse engineering, no calculations. This tells you right now what gear you are in or not. So that is probably one of the greatest pieces to this transmission from a, a computer geek standpoint. For those wondering, this is actually just a breather tube that you, you wire up so that way it uh, can expand and contract the remaining air uh, and fluid. You know, it's obviously gonna take trans fluid uh, inside of there that I'm gonna have to figure out how to run somewhere. And speaking of trans fluid, my favorite liquid of all time, these two are just little, they should be six. That's a six AN fitting and you can obviously run this without, with those plugged, that allows you to run a transmission cooler, a transmission fluid pump. So that way you can really endurance race this transmission. That's what it's used for is long haul, long ass hauling <laughs> transmission races, you know, where you're, you're just slamming gears and going crazy. That transmission can be cool as well. So the neatest thing to me about the Hollander RD6 is that it can be taken apart. Gears can be pulled in and out and swapped 
with hand tools. It is a transmission that is meant to be worked on in the field. Of course, you don't want to do that, but it could be. That's what I love about this thing is that it is user serviceable. You guys know I love to tinker. There we go. We have the ultimate solution for this. As for official numbers, they say that it's rated to 650 foot pounds of torque. That is in endurance situations. So ongoing constant applied pressure of 650 foot pounds of torque, it will last that indefinitely. Obviously the service life of gears and whatnot being the limit at that point. This thing can handle way more than a thousand foot pounds of torque. You know, it's obviously nobody ever tells you the maximum because you know, there's a liability involved, but this thing can handle what we're gonna be putting down without a problem. You see a lot of those guys doing their GTR all wheel drive setups and they, they've set the precedent for me. 